Hey, what's up, Reefers? In the forever quest to keep exploring different video options, this video is filmed using 4K at 60 megabits per second. Uh, check it out, let me know what you think. Alright, so it has been a while since I talked about the 45 gallon tank and there has been a lot of changes. Let's go with the most obvious first. Uh, number one, the left side of the tank. There used to be a big piece of GSP right here with the Gorgonian sitting on top. But with the Gorgonian growing taller and taller, I'm losing the contrast between the main column and the uh, front accent. So I decided to take out a GSP and then instead place two pieces of shorter uh, dry rocks up front to kind of retain a contrast of like, hey, in the front is small, as low as out of the way, and the back is like where the, you know, the big things are. Unfortunately, the Gorgonian is still too tall, so I may just chop the top off and just frack those up. Um, and this this portion is going to look really awkward for at least uh, three or four months while I kind of mature and I populate it with um, uh, with some corals. So uh, it's kind of like when you just got your hair cut the first week, it looks kind of awkward. So I think like the 45 gallon tank is going through that phase right now. In terms of plan for the front portion, I really want to try Florida Recordia again. Um, I used to have good luck with them in my old tank, but for some reason, they just don't like this tank. At least like this this was before I got the LDI water and all those things. So I will be on the lookout for some uh, nice Recordia, um, the Florida Recordia frags. So I'm aiming for the metallic orange ones, so um, we'll see. All right, let's talk about some of the new additions. So if you remember from my vlog two weeks ago, I picked up this Teresa Clam from the Mason Dixon Reef Club Frag Swap, and it's doing well. I'm really happy with this guy, he seems to be really happy. Um, so, I'm crossing my fingers. And right above it, there's the Rainbow A-Can that I also picked up from the Frag Swap. And then it's also doing really well, and the rainbow color is slowly showing. Uh, I've always had pretty good luck with uh, Aiken in this tank, so I'm hoping that this will be no different. And to the right, it's not a new pickup, it's been there for a while. This is the Torch Coral that got bleached out. Uh, and I think it's slowly recovering. I'm seeing some darker color coming back from the bottom, so crossing my fingers. Now you may see this guy kind of swimming around in the back. Yes, that is a bicolor blending. If you have been following my, uh, my channel, one of the video I did was uh, talk about my first reef tank that was like a 30 gallon tank and how I got into the hobby and this this guy the bicolor uh, the bicolor blenny is actually the reason I'm in the hobby right now I saw this guy at a congressional aquarium a congressional aquarium and the one I saw just perched inside a empty urchin shell like the body of an urchin and just got perched and just look at people and it will come out from time to time when there's like food and they swim back in and perch here again I found that so intriguing and ever since then I've always wanted a bicolor blenny at some point I have a Midas blenny but it's still it's not the same Midas blenny for some reason just keeps swimming in open open water I'm like what's going on you're not perching at all but this guy's different he actually stopped look at you and kind of swim around a little bit so so far I'm really enjoying him in the thread fin carbonyl fish video during the unboxing I pulled out a bag that's kind of wrapped in black and you can't really see in there I say it's a coral that I'm pretty stoked about that's actually that piece in the back um, all the way back there so what it is is actually a photosynthetic sponge which I thought is really cool because sponge is normally filter feeder and they're not photosynthetic but this one for whatever reason is photosynthetic and has a nice cool shimmer there's like a glaze over it so I went ahead and picked it up and it does not look as sexy as it looked in photos. So I kind of put it in the back for now until I figure out where's a good spot for it. Uh, most likely, I'm gonna sort this, this portion out and we're gonna park it up here. So besides the new addition, overall the tank health is pretty good. Everything is growing fast and filling the space nicely. Uh, the fastest grower gotta be the Mondi Caps, as always. Um, it continues to scroll. And I'm really looking forward to see what kind of formation it will take in my tank. And the second fastest grower right now is actually the uh, orange or rainbow bubble tip anemone. It used to be a lot smaller and it's up here. Ever since it moved down here, I guess it has a little bit more space to itself. 
uh, it really got enlarged and the color actually ch started changing. I'm starting to see more of a orange hue to it now compared to where it was before. And I'll show you guys uh, the clone of this guy in the drop off tank. It's the orange is a lot more obvious. So I'm really hopeful that it'll start regaining its color. But at the same time, the spotted pig is not the best because it's kind of stinging the outer corals like all the zoas and um, the yellow Fiji leather in the back but as long as it's happy um, <laughs> I'm gonna see how the outer corals cor um, reacts if uh, it's too big of an issue then I'll have to find a way to move the anemone the elegance coral is getting larger and larger probably due to the <laughs> dirty water as well as how much I feed the tank uh, as you can see up here, this is, uh, has gotten pretty massive. And I'm trying my best to find a corner for it so that it will not sting out of corals. But it looks like I may have to move it a little bit closer to the back now. And since we're looking from this angle, to the left, right next to Zoas, you actually see a green bubble tip anatomy I just picked up as well. Uh, I picked it up at the same day I picked up the bicolor blenny. I saw the green bubble tip ana uh, anatomy at Congressional Aquarium. I thought it was special because the, the, the foot is actually purple. It's like a bright purple color. Um, I know that uh, this is like a natural morph and it may have been common, I'm not sure, but I've never seen one. And the purple just vibrant. Uh, I just had to pick it up. It's a really small guy, uh, but once it got into my tank, it's a little bit larger, but I think it's still kind of adjusting. Uh, so, but it's looking a lot better compared to when it first got into my tank and I think, uh, well, I think it's going to make it and I'm just waiting for it to really get acclimated so I can show you guys how it actually looks. I'm so, ex I'm really excited about this guy actually. So here's actually another coral I got from the Mason Dixon Reef Club Frag Swap. Uh, not the Rose Bowl of the Banana Me, but right behind it is actually the green Singulara. Uh, I put it right smack in between the frog spawn and the rosemary anemone because there's a nice spot right for it. And I figure once it starts growing larger, and you can see from the front, it may add some nice flowing pattern up here. Assuming it does not get stung by the rosemary anemone first. So I'll keep an eye on it. Uh, once it starts growing larger, I may uh, move it somewhere else or I may keep it up there to add some motion. Uh, well, before the frog spine was not this big and the rose bottom anatomy was not this big. They're a little bit, a lot shorter and smaller. Um, so it would have worked out, but now that they've gotten a lot bigger, I may have to move that frag to somewhere else. So by now, some of you must be wondering what's going on with my sand bed, because we're starting to see some algae showing up right here, back there, and up front. So this light dusting is probably caused by me removing the um, GSP rock and stirring up a lot of detritus by putting new rocks in as well. Also, another big contributing factor is actually, I pretty much ripped out my refugium one more time. I removed a lot of the live rocks and I added a big piece of marine pure block. This is like the larger size one. So one piece of this is supposed to be good for at least like 100 gallon tank and I kept the older piece back there because I feel like the live rock is just kind of there just in cluster it's collecting a lot of detritus and I didn't like that so I ripped that out I cleaned this area up again with the uh, wet vac and I dumped this block in and I'm sure it caused a cycle because like the um, the macroalgae is trapping a lot of detritus as well so I gave it like a nice shaking and stuff uh, in the bucket so uh, this area is a lot cleaner but because of these, all these like uh, improvements, it stirred up a lot of detritus. So that gave the uh, algae some fuel to grow. So this is gonna get a little bit worse before it gets a little better. So I'm gonna stick with this and see how it goes. And I swapped in the media reactor, I pulled out the carbon, I was running just carbon. I pulled out the carbon, I started running um, the GFO. And I also ins inserted the uh, filter sock so I can start trapping all the detritus as free floating and hoping to pull them out of the system before they start breaking down. This will probably be the last video where you'll see the blue tank uh, in this tank if everything goes according to plan. My plan is to spend this weekend to trap the blue tank and finally move them to a much larger tank. 
Now the reason I'm doing this is because I noticed that his um, swim pattern started changing. So before he would kind of just hover, kind of dart in and out of the rock work and just seems really happy. But recently he started pacing the tank a lot more. Uh, it's almost like he want to swim, but it's not enough room. So seeing this, I know it's time to move him to a larger tank. So this weekend, I'm going to finally get him out. He's done with his grow out tank. It's time for him to move on to a longer tank. So I will be sure to keep you guys posted. All right, guys, that is it for this update. And to be honest, 4K video has been a pain to ask to work with, simply because with my camera, it overheats really quickly uh, when shooting in 4K. And um, and yeah, that's why you notice I speak a lot faster because as soon as I start seeing that it's getting hot, I just try to get all the stuff in before I have to uh, take a break again. So we'll see if the video footage is worth it and then we'll decide whether to stick with 4K or switching back to 1080p. And again, I apologize for speaking a lot faster in this video. All right, with that said, I hope you guys have a good week and I will catch you next time. And it's overheating again.